We're a long way removed from the smartphone boom of the early 2010s, with phone sales having leveled off over the past few years. Phones in general are commoditized now to the point where it's hard to buy a bad one unless you're spending absolute bargain bin money, and at the high end in particular you can basically throw a rock and hit an excellent handset. But that doesn't mean in the early 2020s that phones are boring. In fact, there's one area of high-end smartphone tech that's never been more exciting, and that is of course photography. Take a sec to subscribe so you don't miss everything we do here at Android Central, and we'll take a look at what to expect from the phone cameras of the future. The gold standard for smartphone photography in 2021 is Samsung's Galaxy S21 Ultra. It's got a gigantic main image sensor that can pull light and color from areas that appear pitch black to the naked eye, and the dual telephoto lenses at 3x and 10x can resolve more detail in faraway subjects than even the sharpest of human vision. Compare that to the flagship phones of just a few years ago in 2016, where you'd be lucky to get just one camera capable of taking a half-decent photo in less than ideal lighting. It's clear that we've come a long way. Larger sensors have allowed phone cameras to capture more light, and the increasing number crunching power of phones has enabled computational photography to turn those photons into better looking photos. Meanwhile, the inclusion of new telephoto and ultra wide lenses has made the camera that's always with you more versatile than ever before. But we haven't reached the technological limits of phone cameras just yet, in fact, we're not even close. This year we're due to see the first 1-inch phone camera sensors, a size of sensor previously limited to relatively expensive point-and-shoot cameras like the Sony RX100 series. And besides bragging rights, there really are some benefits of even larger image sensors in phones. A bigger sensor can capture more light in a shorter space of time, allowing for quicker shutter speeds, which in turn can help you capture moving subjects with less blurring. So while a 1-inch sensor might be total overkill for a lot of situations, it can get you that extra versatility in lower light, for example with kids or pets, or anything else that likes to move around a lot. Outside of brute forcing better photos through superior optics, computational photography can also help small smartphone sensors produce phenomenal shots. The best example of this is Google's HDR Plus feature, enabled by default on its Pixel cameras. HDR Plus intelligently exposes photos, combines multiple frames into one better image, then uses techniques like semantic segmentation to brighten faces and selectively sharpen certain areas. Google has also managed to eke more resolution out of its 1x and 2x cameras with a computational technique called Super Res Zoom, which uses the motion of the camera's optical stabilization to pull more detail out of a digitally zoomed crop. At the bleeding edge of phone photo processing, you have features like the Pixel's astrophotography mode, which uses computational photography to adjust for the natural rotation of the Earth when taking photos of the night sky. Although Google still leads the way with its computational secret source, Rivals are starting to catch up with the Pixel Maker in this area. In the coming years, expect to see more companies with the necessary R&D budget to flex new and impressive computational features like astrophotography. We should also mention telephoto in more detail. Periscope Super Zoom is my favorite new smartphone feature of the past couple of years. Coming a 5x to 10x zoom camera in a device that still fits inside your pocket is a huge technological achievement, and the extra versatility it brings to your shots is a revelation. But current Super Zoom phone cameras, and in fact all phone cameras generally, suffer from one basic weakness. They have a fixed focal length and rely on digital crops when shooting at anything in between the native zoom level of each camera. This can become a problem when there's a big gap between the various zoom levels. For example, in the Oppo Find X2 Pro you go from a 4.9x digital crop from the 1x camera to a true 5x zoom, and obviously there's a huge difference in quality between those two zoom levels. We're just now starting to see one possible solution to this problem in the form of a liquid lens. First seen in Xiaomi's Mi Mix Fold, this seeks to replicate the true intermediate zoom that you might find from a point-and-shoot camera or a DSLR. Instead of a glass lens, phones like the Mi Mix Fold use an optical-grade liquid, applying an electrical current to this liquid lens to adjust the focus and focal length. In the Mi Mix Fold, it's used to switch between macro and telephoto mode, but it's easy to see how this tech could be developed further to allow for higher quality telephoto or ultra-wide shots at different zoom levels with fewer physical sensors. Samsung applied for patents around liquid lenses in the early 2010s, and next year's Galaxy S22 Ultra is rumored to use a continuous zoom lens feature, so it's possible this technology could be used in that kind of a camera. Then there's the humble selfie camera, and front-facing shooters have been somewhat neglected of late, as companies have instead pushed towards ever smaller hole-punch cameras in pursuit of higher screen-to-body ratios. 
The impending move towards under-display selfie cameras and the hit to photo quality that seems to involve might seem like a reason to be pessimistic about any huge jump in selfie quality anytime soon, but one manufacturer has showcased a creative solution to this problem over the past couple of years. Asus's flip cameras, like the Zenfone 8 Flip, place their camera array, including all three lenses, on a rotating module, which can be positioned facing the front or the back or anywhere in between. Not only does this mean you're shooting selfies with a higher quality main camera, but it also lets you use the ultra-wide, or even the telephoto if you want to, to capture a unique perspective with more scenery or friends. Now, granted, few other manufacturers have stuck it out with mechanical cameras in phones, but as the competition pushes towards more borderless designs, this technology could re-emerge as a way to maintain selfie quality without expensive under-display cameras. The other solution is something we've already seen from some Chinese manufacturers. If you can't put a camera on the front of the phone, then just put a screen on the back and use that as the viewfinder for your selfies. Back in 2018, ZTE's Nubia brand released the Z18S, which did exactly this. Although the idea hasn't exactly caught on, Xiaomi's top-end Mi 11 Ultra does feature a rear-facing display. It's a bit awkward to use as a viewfinder right now, but it's not impossible to imagine a larger version of this that might work a little bit better in the years ahead. In mid-2021, most phones may be basically good enough for the vast majority of people's needs, but that doesn't mean there's not plenty to look forward to in the coming generations of phone cameras. We all remember the crummy, blurry, grainy cameras of our first smartphones, whether it was 10 or 15 years ago or something more recent, and before we know it, we could be looking back at the flagship phone cameras of today through those same potato-tinted lenses. That's it for now, let us know in the comments what you want to see from the next generation of phone cameras. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.